Alright family, gather here, gather here. You are not seeing wrong at all. It is real. We are doing a cook with me. Today we are going to be making some delicious Ghana jollof. I also have some yam balls going. Just look at how perfect these are. And to go with the yam balls, I'm making some rainbow pepper sauce. Beautiful, vibrant, spicy. You will love this. It pairs so well with the yam balls, but goes with everything. We are making the almighty Ghana salad. Yes, fully loaded. Just look at how gorgeous. I know. I know you want to stick around and see all that I make today. But before we even say anything else, please give me a thumbs up. Please share this video so your family and friends will see it as well. And hopefully you try most of these things that I'm going to be cooking here. So I'm very much aware that most of my KK fam discovered me from videos like this where I cook a bunch of meals. And I'm super excited that I got this filmed and here to share with you. I hope you love it just like you've loved the ones made previously. With that being said, we have lots of work to do. So come along and let's do some cooking. First thing I want to prep will be my meat. So I have chicken and I also have a rack of pork. And I'm going to get them washed and seasoned so it gets enough time to stay and marinate. I don't know what happened in your area, especially if you are in the United States, but over here around Christmas time, finding chicken was crazy. I went to about three different shops. I couldn't find any chicken. And on Christmas Eve, I happened to just randomly stop by a fries that was in a secluded area and I found three whole chickens. I wasn't going to be greedy, but I took two and left one. And that is how I got some chicken to cook. <laughs> anyway, I'm washing mine with some vinegar, cleaning it thoroughly. Now I'm going to rinse it and then we'll get it ready to be marinated. So I always like to wet my kitchen towel, place it on the countertop before I put my chopping board. That way it is not flying around. I don't know how many times I've said this. It's going to be like a song at this point. Put my chicken on there now. I'm going to wash my pork. Typically, I would have liked to use a rack of lamb, but the prices I was seeing, mm -mm, I couldn't do it. For a portion like this, it would have been like almost $100. No, I wasn't doing it. And you know me, I have champagne taste on the Kool-Aid, and I have a kind of shame in my budget. So I was like, you know what? <laughs> I'm just going to go for the looks. The taste will be there a little bit. Not so much, but it will be there. <laughs> And at least I get what I can afford and not eat and cry. So here, behold, is my pork. You can use your lamb, especially if you found one on sale. It's perfectly priced now, and that is the time I would buy it. I'm going to spatchcock my chicken, what some people also say butterfly. And to do that, I'm just going to cut off the spine. So the backbone comes off. It's easier for me to use a scissors. You could use a knife as well depending on how easy it is for you to use it, but the scissors always works better for me. So once the backbone is off or the spine, you wanna just cut through this part just a little bit, and that way when you flip it, your chicken is going to be able to lay flat. Just push down on the chest cavity, and there you have it, your spatchcock chicken or your butterfly chicken I'm just going to put it dry and then I'll go ahead and get my marinade on it I'm going to first off apply some salt some garlic powder onion powder some paprika Delicious. I'm also going to be adding some ginger powder Delicious. and some chicken and poultry wrap yeah. I'm going to massage this onto my chicken yeah. and of course I'm not going to forget about the skin and the breast part you know, this is the thickest part of your chicken. You want to make sure that it has enough seasoning. So I'm going to lift that skin, apply some, flip it over, and repeat all these ingredients that I just applied on the inner part of my chicken. Delicious. 
I'm also going to apply some of my homemade all-purpose seasoning. This has rosemary, thyme, oregano, some peppers, more ginger, a whole bunch of stuff blended together. I have shared the recipe here before and I'm going to link it for you. So now that my chicken is perfectly seasoned, I've transferred it into my baking dish. I'm applying some oil just so it comes out looking moist and perfect. You want some oil on it so it's not just roasting. You're trying to bake this. Typically, I would do this on the grill, but this is going to go in the oven. So I've covered this with some film. I'm going to let it sit in the fridge until about, give it about two hours before I actually bring it out to bake. So I'm going to do the same with my pork potted dry and I'm going to transfer it straight into my baking dish. I'm going to apply some salt, garlic powder and onion powder. I'm keeping it very simple on this. Well, not really simple because the actual seasoning is suya spice. So I'm making some suya pork ribs, okay? Back of pork, I should say. And this turned out so good, juicy. So I say I'm going very less, but you have to remember that the suya spice is loaded. It has peanut, it has pepper, onion, bunch of spices in there already, ginger, garlic probably. I don't know. I put garlic in when I make it at home. So, so it's already loaded. And now that I have applied that, added just a little bit of oil onto that as well. I'm going to cover it as well and let it sit in the fridge so I get it to marinate. So the meat has been taken care of. I've cleaned my surfaces and now I'm going to go ahead and bring out my yam. This is going to be for the yam balls and I found some puna in the African market so yay. Yeah, just when I was about doing my happy dance that all three tubers of yam that I bought were perfect. Look at this very last one. <laughs> you can never win. You can never ever. Can you smell the aroma? Yeah. From what she was kitchen. Yeah. Dead out. Delicious. Yeah. Ooh, delicious. Dead out. Delicious. Yeah. Ooh, delicious. Now, my mom is here standing right there watching me peel that yam making sure that I scrape it just like this because according to her that's how especially if you were cooking it from PC you were just boiling it to eat with some stew this is how it will look perfect all the rough edges from you peeling it will be smoothened out so and as usual I dare not cut it into big chunks because it got to cut chunk on me, but see, baby, some be so just like she would want it. It is perfectly done and ready to be rinsed off. So I did peel my yam the old-fashioned way because, well, you can teach this old dog new tricks, okay? <laughs> but if you are learning to peel yams so or you're very skilled, it's easy for you to learn new ways. Then. I think this is the perfect way for you to peel your yam. You cut it into rings and then you peel the skin off. I find that I'm faster doing it the old way that I've done so many times. But even mama standing and watching things, this is better. So you are not cutting off too much of your yam. So if this works for you, please do it this way.
for my yam balls I'm going to boil my yam just like you would if you were making them pissy only thing is I didn't add any salt I'm going to add all my salt in when I mash it up I'm also going to be boiling some eggs that is going to be for my Ghana salad so you want to boil that way ahead of time of course for it to cool off so it goes on your salad when it is cold my yam is perfectly cooked now I'm going to bring it off the fire Best practice is you mash your yam whilst it's still piping hot. So as soon as you drain the water out, you want to go ahead and just mash it, just like you would if you were making a top. It looks like I still had some water in my pot, so I drained that from my mixing bowl. I have everything here now, and I'm quickly mashing it whilst it's hot. It makes it easier for you to get a perfect texture. Once it cools off, it gets hard, of course, and when you mash it, you're most likely going to get your mashed yam being lumpy. So piping hot, very easy for you to work with. Now everything is done. I have no lumps in here. I'm going to be adding some butter. And because it's hot, it helps the butter to also just melt. Otherwise, you want to use room temperature butter or margarine. Whatever works better for you. I've added some sardine because, hey, this has to be rich. I've also added some salt, white pepper, some onion paste. I'm going to be adding in here as well some corned beef, aka corner beef. I had this in the fridge, so all the better that it goes in while it's hot. I'm going to mash everything together. Just like so. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add a little bit of milk because, well, we can and it's going to be rich and perfect. I'm going to be adding two eggs and the eggs actually I'm going to use the yolk in the mixture so that is going to go into my yam paste. The egg white is going to be used as an egg wash when I am about to fry my yam ball so separation has been done. I'm going to add the yolks in here now and then mix it all together. In more technical terms the yolk has been used as a binder and the white is going to also be used as an egg or for the coating of our yam balls so <laughs> i'm actually going to add one more egg for that purpose because the wash will not be enough with the two egg whites to try to make everything come out very uniform i'm going to be using a cookie dough scooper to scoop up my paste so once I scoop it up, I'm just going to roll it around in my hand to make a ball shape. Typically, I would make it into an egg. That is how I actually grew up making it. I like to shape my like eggs, but well, I'm trying to make balls this time. So yam balls, not yam eggs or eggy yams or yummy eggs. <laughs> right, then can I go away? And you're serious. Oh, you're serious. <laughs> But whatever works for you, you do it, okay? If you can make it even, you definitely don't need the scooper, but it helps me to make it look very uniform. Delicious, yeah, yeah. Mm, delicious, dad, delicious, yeah, yeah. Mm, delicious, da, da, da. delicious. It is a perfect time now for me to bring my meat back out of the fridge so that everything is going to end up being cooked and ready at the same time. So I'm going to set them down, start preheating my oven so they can go in as soon as the oven is ready. And family, always make sure that there's nothing in your oven when you light it, especially if you are one who keeps oil after you use them in the oven because... That is one sure way for you to start a fire in no time. So I try to do that all the time. Please do that if you don't. I typically would 
grill these but I'm going to cook them in the oven so I've preheated my oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and I'm going to put both in the middle rack these two dishes will fit there perfectly so there we go I've also set my timer for 45 minutes so after 45 minutes I'm gonna check on them I'm going to preheat my oil so I can start frying my yam balls. I'm also going to start cooking my jollof and I'm going to be using some pre-made tomato stew. Like I always say, it is the surest way for you to get your jollof done in no time or your watches too. So we always have a big batch of this made and we freeze in portions. So this is just going to cook a little bit more just to warm up. It has absolutely no salt or anything in it. It is very plain. So whatever meat or whatever flavors you choose to have in your jollof or your watches too, at the time that you are making that little portion, you use the stock of whatever meat you are using to do that. I also have my rice washed. I'm going to let it drip dry whilst my stew is warming up and then I'm going to add it into my stew once it is warm. I'm going to add some salt as well as some smoked paprika. The smoked paprika is not going to really add spice in here. It is just going to bring a little bit of fragrance. It has a smoky flavor to it so it makes your jollof taste and smell a little bit like how smoky jollof would have been. So just a little bit, you just don't want to overdo it. Now I've also added some coconut milk which I happen to have in my fridge. This is about a half to three quarter cup full of uh, coconut milk and now I'm going to add some boiling water you want to add boiling water especially after you've toasted your rice you want it to maintain the temperature typically when we make our stew base we make it like a blank canvas so it just has the essentials in it it is tasty it is fragrant but you actually make a big batch you don't want to be eating the same thing all the time so we keep it a little neutral so what you just saw me pour in here was some goat meat stock and so this is going to be tasting like goat meat jollof and so i don't need to add anything else to that that is cooking and i'm going to get ready to start frying my yam balls My 45 minute timer just went off, chicken is looking perfect 
uh, I'm going to just run some of the juices that it has rendered back onto it to keep it moist cover with aluminum foil I'm going to do the same for the pork and just let them continue cooking for an extra about 30 minutes and do you see how perfect that jollof is looking the color check texture check 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 and yes for you to get this perfectly cooked jollof the color on point I am going to tell you that once you make your stew ahead of time, very well fried, very well cooked, just in much yankasa, you can be assured that the color of your jollof is going to be perfect. I'm going to cover with some parchment paper so that I don't have to add any more water in here so it will cook perfectly. Eggs have cooled all the way off now. I'm going to just peel them and set that aside. Well, I'm going to make my rainbow sauce now. That is going to go so well with my yam ball. So I have some medley peppers. These are sweet medley peppers. And so I've just washed them. I'm going to leave the seeds of those as well as my um, jalapenos. I'm just going to leave them intact. The spice is going to be derived from the seeds. So I'm just going to maintain them. I've added some garlic. I'm also going to peel my ginger, cut it up into little pieces and add it in here. And I'm just using my food processor because I want to have them come in of roughly chopped. I want texture. I'm making a rainbow pepper sauce. As the name says, rainbow. So you want to see all the little pieces that makes that rainbow a rainbow. You can use any oil of choice to make your rainbow sauce, but for me, it is always, always coconut oil. The aroma is just perfect with it. The taste is better for me, I think. And so I always use virgin coconut oil in my rainbow pepper sauce. Use whatever you think is I do for you. I like to keep the flavors very simple in here so I've added some salt, a little bit of Maggi shrimp to it as well. You can use regular shrimp powder. I happen to be out of shrimp powder this day so that little bit of Maggi is going to help it. You can use whatever seasoning that you typically put in your food. The jollof is perfectly cooked now. The vapor has just cooked it all the way through. A yee yee one one just like most people like to party your love so at this point we can say we've washed our hands off one more item on the menu I'm going to start getting ready to make my Ghana salad so I'm first of all going to wash my ingredients the lettuce I'm going to be using is curly leaf lettuce very very similar if not the same as what we typically use in Ghana so I'm going to separate them make sure that I am able to wash in between all the leaves, the front, the back. So splitting them makes, makes it easy for you to make sure that it is thoroughly washed. I'm going to add some vinegar. And now I'm going to start rinsing them off. And the rainbow sauce is done. Look at how beautiful you actually see all that bits of color, different, different kinds of peppers and other ingredients in here. And that is why I call it rainbow sauce. I'm going to dish out what I'm going to be sending to the table. Let the rest cool off and I like to save them in jars and put them in my fridge. They are perfect to go on meats. They are perfect to eat your rice with. I put it on literally everything. Your fried yam, 
but you can use it as marinade so the choices are endless the options so try it i've also pat dry all the ingredients for my salad and i'm going to start chopping them in a little bit my meats at this point have been cooked perfectly look at that chicken i am going to drizzle more of that juices that it has rendered so it stays moist look at that pork ooh, ooh. i almost burned the bottom but the meat itself is perfect going to leave the aluminum foil on both of them so that they stay moist I actually put them back in the oven with it turned off so they stay warm until I was ready to serve and now let's make that famous Ghana salad I like to use my mandolin slicer to cut up my ingredients so I'm going to start off with my cucumbers I'm going to make my salad in layers because you know this Ghana salad is loaded you want every scoop of it to have pretty much all the ingredients without you having to mix them or toss it so I'm going to prep all my ingredients set it aside and once everything is done I'm going to put it together So the newest thing I've learned about making my Ghana salad is to mix my high salad dressing with some evaporated milk, preferably pig milk. But I do have some Kaneshi milk here. My friend did make some salad not too long ago and when I tasted it, I knew there was something different about the dressing. She actually gave me some of the dressing on the side. You could tell it is very similar to high salad dressing, but it was a little bit milder. It was a little lighter. And she says her mom has been making it this way for so many years. The Fanties, she says that's how they make it. And boy, was it good. So I've mixed that, set it aside. It was more like two parts salad dressing to one part milk. And now I'm going to get my other ingredients, which is my sardine. I have my tighter sardine as well as my Exeter corn beef, corner beef, opening it, getting it ready. So we make it. And of course, well, the big beans has to be high as well. And so that is here. And now let's start layering the salad. You know our Ghana salad is our flex, so you want to make sure that it is looking perfect. People are bringing charcuterie boards to the table. We are bringing our salad looking like a charcuterie, okay? We're not joking here at all. So I've made my cucumber borders. I'm going to arrange everything to complement each other. My onions followed my sardine flaked up. I've added my cut tomatoes arranging my eggs now and I have some cold pasta going in as well corned beef going into little corners tucked in the nooks and crannies just like so I am adding my baked beans and boy I had no ketchup if I did I would have put little dollops in here just to make it pop but I think the red from the tomatoes is bringing that here salad dressing goes on top and just look at that. Yes, all that cooking we've been doing finally has come to an end. Everything is coming to the table. 
and speaking of table I know most of you like tablescape so this is what I did for the setup I actually had the setup done like pretty much half of the season so I just let it complement the Christmas tree and I put red candles for that purpose same old plates my formal plates but they look different and look at all the yumminess that we did together thank you so much for doing this with me you lightened my look <laughs> you know that is a lie but well I enjoy doing that with you look at all the yumminess I hope this motivates you next time you have to cook up a storm I hope you end up cooking some of these dishes that we just made or hopefully everything on this menu it is quite an interesting simple menu that most people would definitely like well I am so happy you helped me out with this cooking keeping me company I truly enjoyed doing this knowing that I am doing it with all my KK fam thank you so much for the love thus far if this is your first time watching me my name is Quanchua and making simple replicable meals like this is what truly makes my heart happy and I'll be so honored if you subscribe and be part of my KK family. It is fun here and you are never going to be bored. Hopefully not. Thank you so much for watching. Kindly give me a thumbs up and share. And until I come your way next time with something delicious, be loving, be kind, be happy. Delicious.